Suzume is here. Makoto Shinkai's follow-up to Weathering With You and Your Name is hitting US theaters this week. And while I haven't seen it at the time of this recording, I did spend two months of my life last year watching everything else the director has ever touched. This experience left me with a much deeper appreciation for Shinkai's style, but I also have a few reservations going into the new project. Namely, after watching the trailers and reading a few interviews, I'm concerned that Shinkai may be falling into a trap that a lot of directors find themselves ensnared by after one or two big hits. And considering Suzume has already grossed $130 million before coming out in the US, chances are this director isn't going anywhere. So, without further ado, here's why I think Suzume will be a better movie if it is left unfinished. If you're unfamiliar with the name, Makoto Shinkai has been making blockbuster anime original features for over 20 years. These movies typically star young people, usually in love or wrestling with the concept, who often contend with some sort of supernatural circumstance along the way. And while there are a few clear winners and losers throughout the collection, all of these titles are worth watching. And I can see an argument for almost any of them being your own personal favorite. I've already made another whole video detailing why I think these movies are different enough to denounce the claims that Shinkai is a one-trick pony. He's got a few tricks and an amazing eye for setting and detail. Very few animated projects handle environments with this much care. Every time Shinkai and his team animate Tokyo or the Japanese countryside, they tackle it from a new angle or perspective or small moment to linger on that just places you precisely there in time and space and adolescence. Achieving this level of visual nuance is not an easy task. And a lot of Shinkai's earlier movies would spend time exploring the richness of a given environment at the expense of an audience-friendly pace. It's no secret, some of his movies are just really slow. Still beautiful, still worth watching, but slow all the same. That all changed a few years ago when Shinkai put out a movie that swapped out long, sad establishing shots for fast-paced montages set to pop music. And from this point, you probably know the rest of the story. It's almost become a cliché to praise your name at this point, but I'm going to do so anyway. This movie should not work. It should be too disorienting, with a plot centered around body swapping, fuzzy memories, and inconsistent timelines. But it somehow all comes together masterfully in under two hours. If Suzume ends up being as good or close to as good as your name, then I think there's nothing to worry about. But that's a high bar. Like, really high. And to make matters worse, I think Makoto Shinkai took the wrong lessons from his movie's massive popularity and success. You see, Shinkai was quoted as being disappointed in the final outcome that eventually made its way to theaters, international film festivals, and my Blu-ray collection. He said that due to budget constraints, Your Name was left incomplete and unbalanced, with a story that he considers to only be fine. It's possible that he was just being humble, but this kind of talk worries me more than it probably should. I really think Shinkai is just flat out wrong, and this kind of talk reminds me of one of my least favorite movie trends in recent years. Jumping over to Hollywood for a minute, have you noticed that a lot of movies coming out lately are just overly long? I saw a lot of movies last year that felt like they would have been vastly improved by cutting out 10 or even 20 minutes from their runtimes. It seems like many prominent directors tend to want to jam more and more into the films that follow after their biggest hits. It's almost like they get too successful or are given too many resources for their follow-up projects. And that's probably why so many A-list Hollywood legends are putting out three-hour-long features. This is not a good trend in my opinion, and not just because I have to avoid drinking water for an entire afternoon in order to get through all of Avatar 2 in one sitting. A movie is allowed to be long, but directors with this much freedom and unrestricted budgets often will waste your time a lot. It seems like even the best directors working have a tendency to forget that a lot of great films and filmmaking come from constraints. Let's use Quentin Tarantino as an example.
Look, we'll get back to Suzume in a second, but just bear with me. I'm a video essay channel. I'm practically contractually obligated to contend with Tarantino at least once a year. So what I'm trying to say is... Don't be a... I can remember almost every moment in Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs before it, because those were movies that had to hide their smaller budgets behind really creative choices and crackling dialogue. Tarantino's more recent projects, like The Hateful Eight or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, might be better shot movies, but they also feel excessive. Music time's over. <laughs> It feels like maybe Tarantino has become too aware that he can make whatever he wants and people will still see it. Or maybe he really did believe watching Brad Pitt drive around in old cars for tens of minutes at a time really was essential to keep off the cutting room floor. This is not a uniquely Tarantino problem. It can be applied to Martin Scorsese, James Cameron, and Christopher Nolan too. All of these directors have been putting out movies that are maybe just too big for audiences to chew and swallow. What I'm trying to say is sometimes less really is more, both in Hollywood and in anime. If it was a constrained budget that forced Shinkai and his team to release your name as we all saw it, then maybe that was the happy accident that led to this so-called incomplete film feeling so refreshing and fulfilling to watch. And the thing about it is, I wouldn't be this worried about the possibility of bloat in Suzume if it was the direct follow-up to your name. But it isn't. There's a movie between the two that we have to talk about. <laughs> what the heck is that? If there was ever a movie that had too much going on, it was this one. A runaway, a misplaced gun, orphans, conspiracy theories, a human sacrifice, and a confusing metaphor for climate change. Weathering With You is a busy movie, with a lot of smaller threads that just don't tie together into a satisfying ending. On paper, this movie should work. I mean, it looks like your name, and it was made by a lot of the same team. So why doesn't it come together nearly as well? One reason for this might be because the movie fails to connect the supernatural plot to its characters. Hina's condition as a weather maiden feels underdeveloped and more like a random misfortune instead of something that fits her character. You could maybe connect it to some big metaphor for chronic illness, but the movie's ending doesn't really support that idea either. I think Your Name handled this aspect of its story a lot better by relating the body-swapping phenomenon to Mitsuha's lineage. And while this aspect of the movie is mostly background information, it does connect really well to the climax of the film, where the character must confront her father in the absence of her mother. This confrontation is what allows Mitsuha to fulfill her inherited duty as a caretaker for all of Itomori. It's a great full circle moment where her experiences throughout Your Name's story and her relationship with Taki empower her to change fate in a way that he as her could not. In a movie about switching places with someone else, Mitsuha is only able to save the day by being true to herself. Weathering With You doesn't really have this kind of moment, and it really can't have this kind of moment because Hodaka and Hina aren't developed as their own characters, outside of their relationship to each other. This and other plot decisions made throughout the movie really rob the characters of much agency. The movie hinges on this one choice Hodaka must make to save Hina, but that choice doesn't really feel that impactful because Hodaka doesn't seem to really know that saving Hina will cause all the problems that it causes. From his perspective, he's either choosing to save his friend or choosing to do nothing, which doesn't really feel like much of a choice. As a result, the guilt he appears to be wrestling with in the film's final moments seems unearned. And that's a problem when the events in your movie lead to such dramatic outcomes. There's a lot of big ideas here, more so than in your name, but those ideas fall flat. This movie is clearly in some way trying to address climate change, but I just don't understand how Shinkai wants the audience to connect that concept to these characters. The visuals, sure. It's fascinating to see how Shinkai has evolved his presentation of rain from something gentle and protective in films like Garden of Words into a really scary and oppressive force in Weathering With You. 
But as for the story, I just don't see it. Unfortunately, Weathering With You's underdeveloped supernatural backdrop is only one of many problems I have with this film. I think a lot of the different ideas and subplots the movie explores are interesting, but it seems to be the case of a director trying to cover more ground than is needed in a single movie, especially one marketed as a fun anime blockbuster. Maybe I just need my metaphors to really hit me over the head, but I think Weathering With You lost the plot somewhere along the way. And as a result, I don't remember this cast or these beautifully animated scenes nearly as fondly as many of Shinkai's other movies. So when I heard his next film was going to be a road trip movie about preventing disasters from other worlds, I started to get nervous. And when I saw that it continues the trend of his movies getting longer and longer, I started to get worried. Suzume might be able to juggle a really busy plot better than Weathering With You, but I won't know for sure until I see it and I am seeing it as soon as possible. If you've already watched the movie, please let me know what you thought of it in a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this preview, please consider subscribing or checking out my other videos. Maybe even my other video on Makoto Shinkai. I really like this director, even if I do prefer his movies unfinished instead of overly saturated.